the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation? Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I had an old professor at Fort Wayne, Dr. Masaki, a teacher of doctrine, who used to tell us, when you ask a law question, you're going to get a law answer. Usually this was when we were asking, is it okay for me to turn in a paper late? And he would say, no. That's the kind of question this young man in our text today asked. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Keep the commandments, says Jesus. And then Jesus goes through the second table of the law. Ah, oh, Jesus, come on. I've done that since I was a young and since I could crawl. That's not the actual translation, that's just my version. Well, says Jesus, sell everything you've got, even the shirt on your back, and give it to the poor. But hey, don't worry about it, fella. You're going to have treasures in heaven. And come on, get up. Follow me. The King James Version actually says, pick up your cross. Follow me. But we all know how it ends. The young man walked away all sad and crying because he had a lot of stuff. Or at least stuff he really liked. And that's the problem with the law. It demands everything from you. You can't keep some of the law and be saved. No, you have to keep the entire law not just by doing it, but in heart, soul, strength, and mind. And on top of that, you'd have to be a pure, perfect person doing it. That's what the law demands. The problem is, the law doesn't save you. No, it makes demands of you. The law demands. It doesn't suggest, like, hey, this would be a neat way to live. The law demands that you love God and love your neighbor completely and unconditionally. So how are those possessions of yours? Today. Today isn't just about money. That would that'd be simple, right? Because some of us don't have much money, so we hear this and go, ah, oh, I'm good. I don't have a lot to give away anyway, so it's not a big deal to me. No. It's possessions, treasures, things to which your heart clings completely and trusts in. And it can be something as big as $50 billion. Or maybe as simple as a raggedy old rap. Like my son, Ty Guy. We love this little guy, but he has, and he looks kind of like Linus carrying around his wrap with him. But he has this blue wrap, and if you look closely at the blue wrap, it's right over here. If you look closely at it, don't say confessionals never use visual aids. <laughs> the wrap, you know, it's blue, and but there's this white part on it that just looks terrible. Originally, this was one of these little wraps that you'd wrap a baby in so they'd be comforted and calm, and they'd relax. And it turned from this beautiful white wrap into what it is today. It's been on the Walmart parking lot ground. It's been lost in the woods. Yesterday it was lost at a bounce house. It's been everywhere. But that wrap will not leave that little guy's side. He will not give it up willingly. Maybe temporarily. He'll give it to you for a second. But guess what? It's going to come back to him. That's his wrap. 
as he's grown to call it with that Texas twang now. Do you have a possession like that? Something that determines your life? Maybe it's something simple, like I could not live, Pastor, without cable TV. If I didn't have my 752 channels, of which I only watched five of them, if I don't have it, life is over. Pastor, if I didn't have my phone, you don't understand, these are all my contacts, and when am I going to play Angry Birds without my phone? Or maybe it's your guns and ammo and hunting time, if that was stripped away from you. Would you willingly give that up? Or maybe it's that house. Or that car. Or maybe it's something sweet and innocent like your family. Your friends. And loved ones. How much time and treasure do we put in to these possessions? Think, think about it this way for a second. How many of y'all have ever taken out a loan to buy a Bible. Anybody? Go to the bank, say, I need a $55 loan so I can buy the Lutheran Study Bible. Or how many of you have taken out a $1 million insurance policy for your small catechism? Have you given your everything for God and your neighbor? Have you given all your time, talents, and treasure and kept nothing for yourself? <coughs> That's what God expects. <coughs> That's what the law demands. Have you done it? Given all and kept nothing for yourself? and rely completely on Christ? <coughs> I think most of us would have to answer no. Well, none of us have done that. None of us have just given away everything and followed Christ. But guess what? Jesus did. That's what Jesus said to the young man. He didn't say, if you sell everything, you'll have treasure in heaven. He just said, you'll have treasure in heaven. That treasure is not based on your works or obedience, but on what Jesus was and is willing to give up. That's the lovely thing about an inheritance. You don't earn it. It's given to you. Let's not ask the young man's law question, but instead petition our Lord, Lord, save me, grant me eternal life according to your good and gracious will. This gospel lesson isn't about money being a bad thing but rather it is the reality that temporal possessions mean nothing in comparison to the heavenly treasure of life eternal that our Lord Jesus Christ purchased for us on the cross. That's the comfort. Have these temp Think about it for a minute. Have these temporal possessions ever made us happy or truly content have these possessions ever just made life perfect? Or are we always worried about losing them? Or have the desire to gain more? That's the problem with earthly possessions. They don't do anything for us. So let's get rid of them then. Because Jesus gives us an eternal possession the forgiveness of our sin and life with Him in heaven. That's a possession. And that possession, that inheritance, is never a burden but a blessing that comforts us in any trial or tribulation that we face during this earthly struggle. 
and that inheritance of the gospel is handed over to you. Jesus died and sealed his last will and testament that all who are under the wrath of the Father and captives of the devil would be freed. On the cross, Jesus took his possession, his sonship, and gave it all up in order that you may be saved. He was forsaken by the Father and left to die. He gave it all up for you in order that he could give you not some, but all that belongs to him. For Jesus is not dead, but is risen and lives and reigns to all eternity to grant you who have nothing before his Father he gives you everything. Forgiveness for your sin, life instead of death, salvation in the place of condemnation. What greater inheritance can you have? That's a possession that will never be taken away. So here's a better question, one that we can now ask after hearing the young man's petition. We ask, not, what must I do to be saved? Rather, what does Jesus do to save me? The answer is everything. He does all the work. He did all the work on the cross. He did all the work by descending into hell and rising on the third day. He does all the work in baptism, all the washing, all the forgiving. He grants you his birthright there and gives you the entire inheritance. He does all the work in absolution. No additional penance needed and no good works to complete the words of absolution that your Lord speaks on you. He does all the work in the sacrament. His body and blood there at His word for you to forgive you all your sins and keep you in the one true faith. He does all the work and you are His most precious possession. Jesus has you. You are His. Nothing else matters when you have that. What an inheritance that we do nothing for, but freely get for Jesus' sake. Blessed are you who have received this inheritance, for it will never be stripped from you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.